why are we so nostalgic as a culture? It's something every generation has felt in some form or another, but it seems like nostalgia has completely taken over our media. I mean, how many times do we need to see this happen? Let's take a look at other eras of nostalgia through history for insight as to where we are now. In France in the late 1700s, there was an overwhelming resurgence of Roman culture that inspired those involved in the French Revolution. Women would wear togas just as Libertas, the goddess of liberty in the Roman pantheon. Men would wear Phrygian hats, the Roman symbol of a republican government. Rome was a historical beacon with no monarch, led by the people. The same inspiration was used by the Americans during the War of Independence, the war that sparked the French Revolution. What about the Romans? Who inspired them? Well, around 58 BCE, during a period of civil war, many of the Romans looked to the ancient Egyptians with fondness and intrigue as their empire tore itself in half. How about during a period that's quite similar to ours, the Industrial Revolution? During the change and tumult of that 80-year period that reshaped every aspect of life, they looked to King Arthur and other tales from a simpler time, as they were commentaries on the fragility of goodness and a lost spirit world. The fascists in the 1930s used Greek and Roman imagery as well in their architecture and rhetoric, thus the Third Reich. The German fascists in particular used traditional German imagery ad nauseum throughout their propaganda to remind people of what was perceived as pure and perfect. It's so endless in politics that I can't really get into it, but here's an example. Ronald Reagan's 1980 presidential campaign slogan was Make America Great Again as the U.S. was coming off a substantial economic recession and energy crisis. It was taken damn near wholesale by somebody else recently. Not him, but he did run a similar propaganda campaign. Him. The focus of the phrase is on again. Reagan was conjuring visions from the lens of the past, a booming post-war America, a past that couldn't be corrupted in memory. And Trump was focusing in on people who were feeling lost and disenfranchised by the changing world around them, attempting to hearken to an age of simplicity, ignoring that the mistakes of that era he was evoking led us to the dilemmas he was crusading against. The past is never as rosy as we recall, but as we all know, days gone by usually feel warm and innocent, devoid of the hardships and pain that comes with basic living. We're all guilty of succumbing to it at numerous points in our life, and this isn't inherently a bad thing, but it does feel nowadays as if our nostalgia is weaponized against us, as the nerd writer put it, and I'll link his video in the description, as he explains with absolute precision how our media uses nostalgia to stuff their products with familiar imagery, but at the cost of losing artistic merit. I went through the top grossing 50 movies of 2018, and only 9 of them were not a reboot, sequel, or based on some other form of existing source material. Though that was more than I expected, I still had to get to number 25 before I found an original screenplay. That means the top 24 were all rehashings of existing properties in some form or another. Rehashing isn't always a bad thing, look at Kubrick's The Shining, or the Coen Brothers' Oh Brother Where Art Thou, or Flubber all of which use pre-existing material to create something memorable and unique. This technique is commonly used in folk music by rearranging preceding songs to fit topical matters. This connects the struggles of the past to the struggles of the present and beyond. Like the links of a chain, each are a single entity, yet all depend on one another. Now, let's take a look at The Force Awakens. It was riding high on a wave of overwhelming nostalgia and anticipation for the resurgence of Star Wars, Instead of using this as an opportunity to tell a new story and expand into a universe that could explore a myriad of possibilities, J.J. Abrams and Disney decided to retread the same story as A New Hope, beat for beat, filled with callbacks and easter eggs, and this was too much acclaim from diehard fans of the franchise. But on the other side of the coin, The Last Jedi decided to blow up the paradigm of Star Wars and move into subversive new territory, yet was met with vitriol from those same fans. Of course, these are corporate products, and they must be concerned with their marketability. But film is an art form as well, and art should be pressed in new directions. The original Star Wars drew upon past movies to make something new and exciting, thus changing the face of cinema as we know it. If George Lucas simply repeated the same tired formula, Star Wars would not exist. Star Wars or any other film series is not holy scripture, it's art. 
And since movies are the main way we as a society consume art, shouldn't we treat it as such? If the filmmakers of today do not press the limits of their medium and instead continue to rehash the same ideas, where will we be in the future? Can we be nostalgic for an age that just repeated what came before it? <laughs> What legacy are we leaving for the generations that will follow us? No new movie in an adored franchise can make you feel the same way you did as a kid, watching those old VHS tapes of the originals, the originals that these new movies are unsuccessfully attempting to imitate. Nostalgia is a gut reaction. It preys on our emotions and longings. It feels almost like an affliction at times. In fact, in the 1600s, it was classified as a disease by the Italians. In the 1700s, Swiss soldiers fighting in France were subject to being buried alive for expressing their nostalgic longing for home through folk songs. Later, post the American Civil War, after a southern defeat, nostalgia rose again. Southern men were scorned and called unmanly for their burning desire for times past. As we can see, a surge of nostalgia is inherent in every era of turmoil and revolution. To circle back to the original point, Perhaps this is what we can learn from our shared consciousness of nostalgia. The American and French revolutions didn't do exactly as the Romans did. They used their culture and policies as stepping stones, adapting and expanding on existing ideas to form a new creation. The past presents the present. There's no way around that fact. There are plenty of IPs in our media that are doing new things. Just look at Twin Peaks The Return. But sadly, if Twin Peaks wasn't an existing property, Lynch's surreal and sublime vision would not have reached fruition. The same with the experimental narrative of Season 4 of Arrested Development, or the groundbreaking Mad Max sequel. There are also many other shows and films that use nostalgia as a jumping off point to tell original, intriguing stories. Look at the smearing of Spielberg in Stranger Things, or the vintage cinema style of every Wes Anderson movie ever made. These aren't harping on existing material, but understanding nostalgia is a driving emotion that can enhance a great story and reveal something new in the process. Unlike Jay Gatsby, we know we can't, can't repeat the past. Of course you can. It can never be recaptured with the fondness of our memories, but as so many others before us, we can use it as a guiding post to learn from and expand upon instead of falling into the trap of melancholy and complacency that comes along with the territory. Once again, we're in an age of transformation, looking to what seemed like a simpler time. The digital revolution has allowed all of our beloved mementos of our youth and beyond to be in perpetual syndication. Let's hope we can channel that endless wealth of the past and this wave of nostalgia, just as the revolutionaries that preceded us did, into sculpting a new world based on the triumphs of our past while moving into a new, brighter future.